All right, so Bank of America is saying uh, don't discount the markets because there's over a trillion dollars sitting in idle cash on the sideline. And given the low interest rate environment, they're thinking that uh, that money will find its way into the market, uh, creating a significant demand for stocks. And of course, a high demand uh, with the same amount of supply leads to increased prices. Um, I, don't be suckered by that argument. I, I'm not saying it's bad. Again, in theory, that sounds that sounds right. It's like all these people sitting on cash. You know, they're not getting they're not getting any interest rate on cash. Why not move into the market to get some growth? That's the theory. All right. Just like other theories, low interest rates will stimulate demand for loans. No, not in a in an economy where people are saying, I, I'm not. I don't want to borrow. Uh oh, we got someone coming up here. Let's go this way. I don't want to take risk assets. Um, I'm comfortable uh, by keeping my money on the sideline because it's safe. And again, you just look at Japan. It's all, I'm telling you, man, it sounds good in theory that people are going to be all of a sudden increasing demand for loans because of low interest rates. It didn't happen in Japan. It's not happening now. Sounds good in theory that people are going to want growth assets because they're getting nothing on their savings accounts. Not with the violence that has to go with those growth assets. The more volatility there is, the less likely people are to invest. It's just that simple, even if it means they're not making any money. Hey, how are you? Good. Good. Hey, puppy dog. Oh. Oh, Pablo, Pablo, be nice for heaven's sake. Anyway, so I'm sitting there thinking, uh, it's weird how some of these economists don't get that. They think inherently uh, a, 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 a fish, there's a market if inefficiency when people are sitting on cash and not, not making any money. Well, they could be investing because historically investing gives you whatever. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, whatever you want to say. Uh-uh. They think there's a market inefficiency when people aren't borrowing money when interest rates are at 1% and 2%. Uh-uh. People, at some point, they say, I don't need the risk. I want the safety. I'm not willing to risk a sure thing, even if I'm not making any money, for a not-so-sure thing, which is what I could get in the markets, but with that comes a lot of volatility. I don't want to take that risk. So anyway, I hear these economists talking like this, and I just say, yeah, in theory, that sounds right. It's the efficient market. Um, I wouldn't say it's efficient market. It's actually just a, uh, a misreading of human nature, as if people are efficient that you can program via the Federal Reserve Board uh, by stimulus check. It, I'm telling you, man... <laughs> Japan is the model. There is a lack of demand for loans, a lack of consumption uh, in terms of spending to create GDP. There is an overwhelming tendency to save. And we are going into the same thing. It's not just because of the, this insanity of the commie virus. It's because of demographic shifting. It's because the amount of debt that people have already accumulated. People are now going to start hoarding cash to pay off debt or just to hoard it because they say, look, it's not worth it. It's not worth it for me to take that risk to hope to get 6 7 8% in the market. Not worth it. Especially, guess who has the money? It's not freaking 40-year-old people with four kids. i tell you that right now. It's old-timers, man. Old Town was like, wow, they're the ones who, the baby boomers, they're the ones who got the cash. The people who don't have the cash are young, er, maybe with uh, families, maybe not, maybe just starting out, maybe not. But either way, they got student loan debts, they got mortgage debt, they got things of that nature, they're worried about their job. So while those people would be inclined, you think, to invest to try and get some growth, they're, they're not the ones who got the money. The people with the money are the baby boomers who retired. They're like, I don't need the risk. I've already played the game. I've won. I don't care about the risk. I just leave that money aside. I don't want to do this anymore. So be careful about false economic theories that seem to have 
truth to them, and they do, but aren't going to come to fruition. In fact, again, just look at Japan. you got to read Richard Koo's book. Again, I forgot who told me about it, but Richard Koo, The Holy Grail of Macroeconomics, that, that was such a, a light for me. I said, you know, it totally, totally makes sense. Because I was always under the impression, you know, basically that people are looking for max efficiency, and, and they're not. People are looking for least pain is what they're looking for. And, uh, and then you got to look at the, the demographics too. So, all right, we'll see you.